Tom, Tom and Krista, you shine, and we are so grateful for your light and your music that you bring to us. Thank you. And all of you, we see that light. Wow, it is magnificent right here in this very room and out there in the wonderfulness of life. So now is my opportunity to introduce our speaker, back by popular demand, <laughs> Scott Thompson, all the way from Las Vegas. <laughs> and that is true. He is a practitioner here at the Center for Spiritual Living from a distance. And so he participates. Am I doing something? OK, good. <laughs> I'll just stand here. And he is, has been a practitioner, practitioner since 2018. He's been in the movement for since 2010. He's done lots of things, and he brings all of who he is and his consciousness to speak today and also to do this great workshop of creating the life we want for 2022, charting the course for the next yet to be. So without my talking more, he has a, a oh, he does Reiki and has an energy practice. He's a chaplain and works at one of the hospitals in Las Vegas and uh, is planning to relocate here to Prescott. Right, yay. So before I talk too much, I'm giving it over to you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Karen. Uh, how does it get better that I'm like wedged between the Raiders, you know, for, <laughs> for, for the morning, for the talk? It's, uh, and thank you for that beautiful, this thing called you, which is, you know, one of our foundation textbooks with Ernest Holmes. And I just feel like I just got this big love blanket that was just wrapped around me when I walked into this sacred space. So it is such an honor to be with you all, beloved. It's on the first day of the new year for this center. And uh, I am um, truly, truly blessed. Um, you know, this center has always been very special to me. Um, I came to the center for the first time back in 2018. And I came through the doors and I sat where that young lady sitting at right there with the beautiful hat. Hello. Um, and I sat there and, and I listened and I felt this community spirit. And it was a oneness that I felt. And I was greeted by then Reverend Kathleen and I was just beginning my journey as a practitioner and then Jackson started playing this funky music and I was, I'm like, yeah, I could get into this. It's like, people are alive. We're having a little fun here. We're having a little spirit moving here. And, you know, when we talk about that knowingness, you know, we all have this ability to know what we know and we know what we know. And as I was sitting right in that chair, I knew I was going to end up being here. I didn't know how. I didn't know when. But I knew I was going to end up being here. And so it is such a joy and an honor to be with you all today as I talk about some things to keep us moving in the new energy. Now, this, this year or this month, our theme is Living Everyday Wonder. And, you know, I drive in from Las Vegas. And when I drive in from Las Vegas, I always let Siri figure out where I'm going. You know, I don't have... No, it's it's never you. It's 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 this guy. It's, that it's this guy. guy. So we're gonna we're gonna mute him because we want to make sure his words are not um, what do you call that? Distracted by the the screech and scratch. So you're gonna use okay. this. All right, I'll use that. That sounds great. Thank you, Jackson. See how how cared for am I? You know, I come here and I like a that blanket of love. So where was I? Oh yes, Siri. So um, Siri was guiding me and guides me to Prescott every time. And um, I always end up going a different way. And I, and I never know quite. And sometimes it's a four and a half hour drive. Sometimes it's a three hour drive. Sometimes it's a five hour drive. And I just go, OK, I'm spirit. Where are we going? You know? And um, as I was driving, all of a sudden, I went from the desert into a winter wonderland. 
And I'm looking around and I'm going, where did all this snow come from? I don't ever remember seeing snow. I have never seen snow up here. And it continued to expand. And then my truck says, ice warning ahead. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I need to be alert. I need to be aware of what's going on here. But as I was driving through the tundra, I like to call it, I was in wonder. And when that's when we talk about living every day in wonder. I was in wonder that I was in the desert and I was surrounded by all this snow and the mountains were covered in snow or the hills. And how, how good is God? How good is God? And then I got cold. Now, cold is something that I'm not used to. When we're in Las Vegas, it's, it's very hot in Las Vegas. I can do hot. But it was very cold, and I'm still cold. But I have a blanket of love around me, so it doesn't feel so bad. So I'm just so grateful to be with you all today. And as we go into our talk about, oh my goodness, where am I with the talk here? See, I get caught in love and living everyday wonder. So the 10 principles, guiding principles, I like to call them. Because have you ever sat back? Maybe some of you have taken classes here, I hope. Some of you have taken classes here. Some of you have read some amazing books that we have and continue to expand that mind, that spiritual mind. You know, because we have the educational mind, and this is an education but it's a different kind of education. It's learning us how to be at peace, how to be in that oneness with each other. Just like when I come in here, I feel the oneness. Whether we all agree or disagree on things, there is a oneness here. There is a power here, and we can use it. And sometimes that power is holding each other up. Because you see, as religious scientists go, we like to think. That's why we are religious scientists. We think. And sometimes that thinking cuts off the feeling. And when we don't get into the feeling of things, the thinking part likes to overrule everything. And this is where separation comes into play. So I'm going to talk a little bit about separation and how we can avoid that by doing some very simple things. So how many of you in here know exactly how you brush your teeth? OK. Change hands. Change hands. How you brush your teeth, this is part of what the first step is called observing your patterns. Observing your patterns. As we go through life every single day, we brush our teeth, we, whatever pattern we do every single morning, we probably do pretty much the same thing every single morning. And are we aware of what we're doing every single morning? It's like breathing. Are we aware that we're breathing? No, not unless we can't breathe. And then all of a sudden we know that we're not breathing and we need to breathe. So when you start becoming aware of observing your patterns of what you're doing and how you're interacting and how you're going through each day, you get to kind of pick up some things and go, why do I do that? Why do I react this way? Why does that person who just cut me off in the road is living? <laughs> why is that? So it's those patterns that we pick up that we become observant to. And if we're not observant to them, then we continue doing the same thing. Now, there's a little saying about insanity. <laughs> insanity is doing the same things over and over and over, expecting a different result, right? Some people know about craziness. There was a song called Crazy Train, Jackson, I think it was, wasn't it? Ozzy Osbourne, something like that. Anyway, so I, I, let me get back on track here. Um, so we're observing our patterns. That's the first step. And so when we observe our patterns, we're able to um, take a look at how we're interacting. So the second step 
is feeling a sense of connection. Now I know each one of you in here today has a sense of connection or you would not be here. You have a sense of connection to something. If it's not to each other, maybe it's to the mere act of coming to church on Sunday. Because people like to call this church, right? We're coming to church on Sunday. And maybe this action of connection was ingrained in your consciousness from a child. Maybe you were raised in a church environment. Maybe you weren't raised in a church environment. Maybe you said, I need to find a community. I'm tired of living out here on my own. Life has beat me down. Why am I alone? And then you come into this space and this place and you find some other people that say, I don't want to be alone anymore. I'm here to coexist. I'm here to thrive. I'm here to connect. And what better place to connect than in the Centers for Spiritual Living, Prescott? There isn't one. Trust me. I've been to a lot of centers. And each center has brought their own unique, beautiful expression of itself. But when I say this center is special, this center is special. I schlepped from Las Vegas to come be with you all. Once a month, I schlepped. And it's an honor, it's a joy. I can't wait to get here. I can't wait to be with you. I can't wait to see your faces. I can't wait for those hugs. I can't wait to listen to Jackson. I, it's like some new songs today. I was like, oh, go Jackson. I can't wait to Richard tends me into this meditation space where I'm like, whoa, I am just like feeling it now. I'm in the Bob, you know? Only here. So, if you come here, perhaps you come here because of connection. Maybe you don't want to be alone anymore. I, I don't like being alone. But then that leads us to the second, the third one, which is called letting go of attachment. Oof. Letting go of attachment. Think about something right now that you're attached to. That, oh my God, if I, if this was gone, this would be the end of me. This would be the end of me. And now imagine that being gone. Would it be the end of you? Or would you show up here? Would you show up here and talk to a practitioner or someone next to you? Say, I just lost someone that I love. I lost my job. I lost my house. But what's waiting to be birthed as a result of that? That's, that's the good stuff. That's the good stuff. Because when we let go of attachment, we allow ourselves to, for something new, something greater, something bigger. But if we cling on to that way of doing things or we cling on to that attachment where are we going what are we doing because I don't know about you but I think that we're here to thrive do you agree and I think that we're here to live our best versions of ourselves whatever that may be and the only way that we get to figure this best version of ourselves out is by getting honest with ourselves. By saying, okay, we have a saying in, in science of mind lingo called the spiritual bypass. Is anyone familiar with the spiritual bypass? Oh, it's okay. It's all good. It's all God. It's all good. Well, it is all good, but if you disconnect yourself from the feelings of it's all good, how is something new going to come in when you got this stilkus in here? I call it stilkus. You got this stilkus in here. I can't clear it out. Letting go of attachment. Maybe I need to let go of my attachment on my iPad here.
So um, the next one, finding inner peace. That seems to be a lifelong project for many of us, finding inner peace. I remember the first time that I connected to peace. I want you to think about the first time you connected to peace. When you actually felt peace in your body, felt peace in your mind, felt peace in your spirit, when they were all functioning on all cylinders and you connected to that peace of peace. I don't think there's anything like it. I really don't. Because when I'm in that state of peace, the world could come to an end and I wouldn't even know it because I'm so peaceful with where I'm at in my life and what's going on and what I'm doing. So if you can think about a time that you were at the most peace, what were you doing? Where were you? Do more of that. Finding nature. I look at this beauty that surrounds us here. And going into nature and looking at trees and rocks and grass and all that stuff. And it's like, wow. This is all here for me. This is, this is my stuff. This is where I get to be. What a privilege. You ever think about that? How privileged that we are that we get to be in a space of peace. So if you're not experiencing peace in your life, that's going to be a problem in living your best version in moving into those principles because we have to find peace peace in our hearts peace in our minds as a chaplain in a time of covid i have sat with many people who didn't believe that they were going to be where they were i have sat with many people who were not at peace very angry very upset didn't believe they had COVID as a respirator was being administered into them and so I get to see the effects of people not being in peace and wishing that their lives were different and how privileged we are right here right now today in this moment in this particular time that we can check ourselves and say I want some peace I want some peace because I'm telling you life is so much better with it but you gotta work for it it's not easy but you know what? They say that everything in life, if it's not worth having, it's not easy. You got to earn it. You got to get it. Which leads me to the next topic of increasing your compassion. Compassion. My brother Richard over here, Buddhist, devout Buddhist compassion how do we have compassion for others if we don't learn how to have compassion for ourselves so right now I want you to take a moment and I want you to think about something that you love about yourself right now Just think about something that you love about yourself maybe it's your eyes maybe it's your hair maybe it's your shoes maybe it's your heart maybe it's your family maybe it's your Whatever. I want you to feel that. Feel that. And then once you feel that, I want you to give it to somebody else. Giving it to somebody else. That's compassion. That's compassion. That's the example of compassion that I like to use for people. It's something that you have so deep inside of you that you cherish and love that you want to give it to somebody else. That's having compassion. And when we have compassion for ourselves, we get to have compassion for others. Moving to 
the next thing of increasing authenticity. Increasing authenticity. What does that mean? How authentic are you? Do you pretend to be somebody else? Or do you stand proud and say, this is who I am? This is who I am. When we have this authentic self and this understanding and knowing of our authentic self, it doesn't matter what's going on around the world. It doesn't matter what's going outside. We're in our own authenticity of, this is who I am. And I don't need to apologize for it. I don't need to excuse myself for it. Because if I've got these others in alignment, if I'm being compassionate with others, if I'm knowing what peace is for myself, if I'm experiencing the beauty and awe and wonder around me, I don't need to excuse anything because I am in that space of God. I am in the space of God. We talk about one mind, one universal mind, one power, one presence. You are that power and presence. And it truly doesn't matter if you're a kind person doing it. It doesn't. The law makes no mistakes about being the law. It only knows how to be the law. So whether you're a kind person and you're wanting to manifest something in your life or you're an unkind person and wanting to manifest something in your life, guess what? It works both ways. It works both ways. I've seen both ways. What was that song? I've looked at life from both sides now. I've seen it both ways where someone can be very unpleasant and very unhappy in their life and they can create anything that they want. Now imagine being able to create anything you want in joy, in happiness, in peace, in gratitude, which leads me to the last spiritual principle gratitude I am so grateful prove it when someone told me that I said what do you mean prove it I don't need to prove anything I'm grateful darn it I am I, I mean I was nice to the neighbor yesterday I put their trash can away I was being grateful no I was not being grateful being grateful is having that sense of understanding and knowingness and true gratitude in this feeling in your body. When you're grateful, you feel it. You feel it. Think about someone did something for you so unexpectedly. Maybe it helped you with um, a bill. Maybe it was financial. Maybe it was emotional. Someone just showed up out of the blue to say, you know, I know you're going through a rough time. Do you want to go to, for coffee? Or maybe it was somebody did something for your car. And then you get that feeling, right? Think about that feeling that's inside of you that happens when somebody is expressing something to you because they're grateful for you. Now, when's the last time you've done something for somebody else? because you were grateful for them. Not because you wanted something from them, but because you were truly grateful for them. We have a new office manager in here, and she put together these wonderful packets for me for my workshop today. I didn't ask her to do that. She like just shifted my consciousness. She shifted my whole energy by doing that and so I'm grateful for you for doing that and thank you that's that feeling that we get to have it's that oozy goozy woozy foozy ooh that feels so goodsy feeling 
when somebody does something out of gratitude for you. So now it's your turn. It's your turn. Go express some gratitude for somebody else. And give them that ooey gooey oozy woozy feeling. Because you know what happens? Your feeling touches their feeling. And it's living in what we call the namaste. The namaste. The divine light within you recognizes the divine light within me. And when we are all in this space, we are one. Namaste. Thank you. Do you want to take it to a little prayer? So we're going to do a little prayer. We're going to do a little prayer. I'm still getting the hang of this. Give me some of that Jackson feel good music, that, 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 that ooey gooey stuff that Jackson does. Get me centered into that space. There it is. And so if you want to join me right now and close your eyes. And we're just going to breathe in that breath of life. That one life. That God life. That life is your life now. And as we breathe in this life, I know that the spirit of compassion, of gratitude, of peace is present right here and right now. And breathing in that air of this sacred space and sacred place of love, of joy, of care. Allow that space to fill within your body. And so knowing that these elements of having that perfect life I know that these qualities are inherently mine because I choose to claim them right here and right now. I know that these qualities can lift and will lift me into spaces in places I have yet to seen or experienced in this life right now. And as you breathe in, breathe in love, breathe in peace, breathe in joy, breathe in compassion. And so now I know the truth of each person in this room. As they move from this space in 2022, let these lessons and teachings grow with them in the seed of manifestation so that all, each dream, each reality comes true. And together we say, and so it is.